gosh, does this does this loss like hit even more in the in the feels for me at least? Um, not since David Bowie, but the difference with I mean, anyway, news is breaking out right now. Uh, Chuck Berry has passed away. He passed away approximately, I think, I mean, the reports are saying 1.26 in the afternoon, and only until now that it's being announced that he that he's passed on and he was 90 years old. I mean, he just turned 90, like, late last year, I think it was December, I think, I, I can be wrong, but, uh, you, you couldn't have the word, um, rock and roll, the art form, and not just even, not just even, like, the trademark or anything, but just the, the whole concept of, of rock itself, of, you know, I mean, I, I mentioned, like in, in a Lincoln Park video not too long ago that me personally I count myself as like someone who's very open-minded I listen to a lot of different forms of music from hip-hop to electronic R&B um, country I mean a little bit of country but you know what I mean um, all sorts of heavy metal thrash metal, new metal, even though that genre is kind of eh. Just around the board, and but for me personally, my home is rock and roll. It is that format of just taking a guitar and just playing music on it with your band. That's always been the norm for me. And that norm, that idea that people can come together and and perform instruments and play music for the for the fun of music, for that euphoric moment of of performing in a band the name rock and roll and rock music as we know it would would not be possible would not even begin to exist without the name and the man Chuck Berry I mean we don't I don't have to go through all the biography I mean there's there's Wikipedia and stuff you know but I mean to, to say this 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 man has is one of the greatest of all time it doesn't really do it justice. I mean, the man, like, responsible for numerous classic hits that endure even to this day, like tracks like Johnny Be Good, uh, Maybelline, uh, 30 Days, um, Havana Moon, uh, Roll Over Beethoven, um, what's that other song? Rock and roll music, which the Beatles covered, like, about a decade later. After that song came out, I mean, just across the board, I mean, the man was truly responsible for not just establishing a, a cultural shift, a genre that a lot of the earlier rock bands from like, like the Rolling Stones and and the Beatles, you know, that they took a huge influence from Barry, from Chuck Barry, into their sound, and they helped them to kind of progress, progress their palette. I mean, this man, not only that, but this man, right from the get-go, like even before the Beatles, really, really kind of stamped that mark, and just broke, tore down all sorts of barriers he tore down music barriers, I mean, as soon as he came from, he broke down music barriers, he broke down, I mean, he wasn't the most, uh, I find it hard to say that he wasn't the most innovative in terms of 
he didn't experiment with hip hop or any of the changing trends and the genres. If you listen to his entire, dis- well, most of his of his discography, he he never really changed his sound that much. He always kind of sticked, stayed very strictly with you know the rock and roll blues that all the way until his his pre his, his last studio album, which was. I think 1979's uh, Rocket, and uh, and also speaking of which, like he had also announced that he was announced that he was going to release a new album, his first one in 35, 36 years, and that it was going to uh, this year in 2017, and it was going to be dedicated to his wife of I think 62, 63 years. For a man that established, for a man that, whether he knew it or not, I, I, don't, I don't think he really cared or had any um, any ambition that I'd like that. I'm going to establish a genre. I'm going to establish a cultural force. I mean, I mean, if you watch all the interviews he he, get, he gave all the way, you know, even from back then, he. He, he didn't go there to establish anything grand or anything like ambitious. The only thing he, he always wanted to do and did till his very last days on this planet was just to rock. It was all just that, the purity and the, 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 the very pure intention of just to play music and to play music that really was of a cultural aesthetic and also that in the process he helped inspired generations of artists that had that has also pushed the boundaries even farther than he did you know it's going to be amazing to to hear this new album, I think it's, it's very, it's going to be very fitting, considering that this new album that he was that he was going to release this year that's that's coming out. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, definitely more news on that later, but not that I know, but as as it comes out, but fitting that it's it's for his wife of many many years, and me personally, like I'm. I'm a very late comer to the party, if you can say. I mean, I, I first, I knew the name of Chuck Berry earlier on, but I, I never really became enticed to listen to any of his, of his songs, um, until I think just not even like. Either it was it was last year, year or it was probably 2015, two years ago, somewhere between there. Uh, I, I can't tell which year, though. Possibly, maybe two years ago, I'm guessing maybe 2015, where I initially discovered um, his uh, Grade 28 uh, compilation album. It compiles all of his singles and his hits um, throughout, I think, his first couple of, of decades or years in, in, in the Chess Records label. And uh, the first time I heard the track Maybelline, you have to understand that up until this that point I was, I mean I didn't necessarily disavow the old, you know I mean like the R and B blues of the earlier years. I'm I'm thinking of like BB King and um, uh, uh, what's the uh, Muddy Waters for instance also too like in that era. Is just that because I was like more into like U2 and and Blink and uh, um, Green Day, you know, those kind of groups, you know, it was like that was my era, that was my time. Uh, and I, I wasn't never really that open to to older styles of music, to, to that kind of, you know, the blues R&B Delta scene at that time. 
but hearing the name Chuck Berry over and over and over again, it just kind of being synonymous with with rock and roll, it just kind of when I when I then decided to give the Great Twenty Eight compilation a try, I thought, okay, why not? Maybe I'll give this a shot. And kid you not, the first time I heard Maybelline, like my <laughs> I was <laughs> I, I was stunned, like literally, just like aghast at just how how upbeat how. I mean, I can't even use words to describe. My initial reaction was just like, you know, blew blew my face out of the water. Like it was so, it's just it's such an upbeat and such a kind of rolling, kind of rocking kind of song. You know, like I will sound really stupid in saying this, in saying this, but it was probably the most punk rockish thing I've ever heard. <laughs> just, just how just how fast the, the rhythm is going like that the rhythm section is just, just like pays no mind to like meter or metronome or anything they're, they're just like pounding away and 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 just Chuck Berry is going insane with that I don't even know if you can if you, I don't know if you can call that call that a a guitar solo but <laughs> I think that song is very synonymous with with Chuck Berry with the name and him as a person and and from there from there on in like hearing the other songs all over all over that album like I I really became a very late comer like a late you know a fan of of Mr. Berry and now and and the last thing that I'll say like the crazy thing is that earlier this morning just out of curiosity I was I was looking up just listening some of Chuck Berry's songs I mean I don't know why like I mean it's <laughs> and it's so insane uh, like I was listening to like you know again Maybelline 30 Days um, Johnny B. Good um, which by the way I also saw not saw but I watched a, a bootleg DVD that I bought from Peru a couple of years ago, and they covered this song "Johnny Johnny Be Good" uh, Green Day, which also kind of like oh, then Chuck Berry, oh, another another aspect of Chuck Berry that he influenced generations, even to the last decade, the, the, to the twenty ten to the, the not speaking well today, <laughs> that the two thousands, like Green Day, you know, but anyway. Earlier this morning, I was listening to Maybelline, all his greatest hits, and I saw his. Um, I rewatched the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame performance he gave in 1986. Fittingly, fittingly so, that was the first ever award, um, the first ever performance of that ceremony. And again, like I mean, that became synonymous with Chuck Berry. Like I mean, he laid the cultural foundation with no ambition or no plans to do so. Like, I mean, his only desire, his pure passion and desire was to play rock and roll music. And that was it. It was nothing of, you know, getting a celebrity deal or it was nothing about corporate labels or there wasn't anything like streaming or whatever. Any of these other big giant ideas that millions of other bands, millions of other rock artists for generations up until now that they have taken that and they kind of ran with it. He just played music because he just wanted to. And I think no matter what happens from here on in, I think that will always be true and the fact that I was listening to all of his songs earlier this morning and just had this very I don't know this weird feeling that something about him was was you know it had to do with him and now for this news to come out and like insane 
and it, it hits me harder because I considering I, I became a fan of his like just like not, not even just two years ago is just mind-boggling but but that only goes that's only a, an even bigger testament to how his music spans decades and spans generations like fans of young and old um, with that with all that said Chuck Berry may be gone but I'd say he's he's even more alive than ever because now rock and roll is still here I mean now there's like all the debate of like you know all oh, rock is dead or, or you know because everything nowadays is just very kind of like R&B pop leaning at least as far as the music industry is concerned I mean that's a whole nother debate but rock is not dead because there's billions upon billions of bands right now in the United States and around the world that are forming right as I speak and none of that every single band from up until now you know from from you know like even the newer bands like Echo Smith to Coldplay, U2, Journey, Pink Floyd, Metallica even the Rolling Stones right even down Nirvana right even down to the Beatles the Beatles were influenced by Chuck Berry I don't know any other person or any other band maybe except you too but that's the exception even you too you know Chuck Berry still is a bigger staple and without Chuck Berry yeah rest in peace Chuck Berry and hail rock and roll that's all I can say. Leave your comments below. Tell me if you have any memories of Chuck Berry or anything you would like to say. Um, we're, I'm eagerly awaiting this new album that's, that's even more poignant now that it's going to come out in 2017 and will be his officially his last album. And uh, I can't wait to listen to it. I mean, I have my own skepticism here and there, but it's just best to wait it out. Rest in peace, Chuck Berry. May you keep on rocking and rolling in the great clouds in the sky. Take care, guys. Rest in peace, Chuck Berry. Mr. Music Fan, I will see you guys next time. Take care.